Okay, while we're waiting on the spackle to dry so we can sand it, I'm gonna go ahead and start trim, cutting in around the walls, the corners, and around the baseboard. A couple of things before we get to start painting. This is not a paintbrush. I don't care what it says on the label, you do not want to buy these cheap little paintbrushes. Good paintbrush, as well as a good roller, does make all the difference on how hard you're gonna work and how good your paint's gonna look. I prefer for cutting in the inch and a half angled. I like a purdy. This is not a purdy. I think it's just a Home Depot version of it, which is it's pretty good. I liked it. They just didn't have a purdy brush. Another thing, paint. Yes, do not go buy $11 a gallon paint. You will paint yourself to death. I prefer bare. It's not necessarily the best. Somebody else may like another brand, but I do like bare paint. And we went with a color called Agave. And now once it dries, it does not look at anything like this. So if you don't decide not to go buy a sample, you put it on your wall and you say, oh, that's not it. Wait till it dries. It's probably going to be a completely different color. So let's get started with the cutting in. We'll start over here over the tub. Uh, one other thing. As you'll see, our ceilings are sprayed sheetrock. They're not smooth. And what I've found is that whoever did our sheetrock got some of it on the wall just below the ceiling. And you can't really paint over it. You get lines, you get all these drip marks and everything. It looks terrible. So you just take your painter's tool or putty knife, just run it up the wall and it just flicks right off. Just be careful not to get it off the ceiling because it, it might, might be noticeable, might not. But if it is on your wall, just scrape it right off. So let's get started with the fun stuff. container for this um, not necessarily the paint I've actually poured the paint in here because you do want to mix it but I found that it's really handy because it's cold enough that I can get a lot of cutty and done and then if I decide to get down I can put the lid on it and don't have to worry about spilling it and you want to leave you want to wipe off the paint from your brush on the side that's going to be facing the surface you don't want to paint. So in this case, it's going to be the ceiling. So I wiped it off on here. I'm going to be painting like this at an angle. Back to taping off. I don't tape off. I do good without, I've managed to, you know, get a good clean line without, as long as I have a good brush. If you need to tape it off, Frog Tape makes a really good painter's tape, or any painter's tape is good. I've actually got some Frog's Tape down there, and when we get around the, uh, Vanity, I'll show you how to use that if you feel the need. And a lot of people will tape off this. Tape it on the ceiling, you just put it wherever you don't want the paint. Me, I don't. Let's get started.
sprinkle of paint around this and that's perfectly fine because usually the scrape the paint will paint scrape right off. This little cover here is usually just kind of snapped on. And you can, yep. Sometimes people put putty behind it, would you hold it on a little snugger? If that's a word. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of a little bit of a mess back there, but it doesn't matter. We're going to cover it back up. I'm just going to get your roller in there. So I'm just going to pull that loose and paint it with my brush. And if you'll notice when I'm painting, cutting in here, I'm coming a good distance from like the ceiling up in the tub. And the reason being is because when I get ready to roll the rest of the wall, I don't want to get that roller extremely close to the ceiling because I will get ceiling on, paint on the ceiling if I do. I'm not a professional painter. I'm a DIY. And if, you know, I get it on the ceiling, I can cover it up, but I'd rather not. I'm not that good sometimes with rolling and I get carried away. So I do come a good distance away from the ceiling and from the vanity when I get ready to, to cut that in. So just make sure you give yourself clean room. You're up there with a the brush anyway. You might as well brush it on because you're gonna you can roll over it. But anyway, I just snap that off, painting around it. And I always start from the top and work your way down. The reason being, if you start from the bottom, that paint's gonna be wet and you're gonna start working your way up. You're gonna put your shoe in it, your leg in it, your shirt in it, your whatever. Same way when you're rolling, start from the top and work your way down. Uh, Learned that the hard way because sometimes I didn't want to drag the ladder out, so I'd start at the bottom. But you know when you're going to make a mess, I have to repaint over it anyway.
Gretchen? Gretchen, you gonna help me? You helping? I gotta help her. Say hi to Daddy. Say hi to everybody. You helping? Okay. You need, to, you need a paintbrush? everything cut in. I've got a little bit more down here, but the paint is dry where we've had to spackle. So let's just go ahead and um, do a little sanding on that. Not going to be using this paintbrush for probably, you know, another 30, 45 minutes if even then. So I'm just going to put it in a Ziploc bag. That'll keep it moist so you don't have to wash it out in between every time. If you are going to be, it's going to be a couple of days before you use it, you can wrap it in saran wrap and put it in the freezer and it will, you don't have to worry about washing it out. You have to let it thaw out before you use it again. So I've got my sanding block and Scott may have to pan the camera over here a little bit. This sand block has been used a lot. But I'm just going to sand over where we put our spackle. It's good and dry now. I'm just rubbing my hand over it to see if it's smooth or flush with the wall. That feels pretty good. Let me go a little more here. Now the problem I ran into with our walls are whoever originally painted them the first time must have let the roller get dry or something because they are not perfectly smooth. You can kind of look and see they got a little bit of a texture to them. So sometimes when I spackle something, it's perfectly smooth and the wall is not. So you can kind of say that I've done that. Um, this is just a first application of spackle I'm putting on there just to make sure the holes feel. It's really more noticeable once you put a coat of paint on there of what it's going to look like at the end. So I'm going to get this sanded out smooth with the wall. Doesn't take much with a lightweight spackle. It doesn't take a lot of sanding. Especially if you've got a painting block that's not more slap out, which is what I'm going to do. So this feels pretty good. It feels like it's pretty smooth with the wall. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start rolling the walls. Now it's probably going to be pretty obvious where I filled these holes up and spackled them. Once I get that coat of paint on there, I've tried a couple of different things to try to make it look like the rest of the wall, which is not completely smooth. Try just, you know, patting the roller over it once it gets a little tacky. That seems to work best. I may try to find something else that works, but let's uh, get out some rollers, pan, and get to rolling. Okay, we're getting ready to roll the balls now, so we're going to really see what this is going to look like here in just a eh, 30 minutes or so. I'm using a semi-smooth roller cover, and that maybe even while these walls are not smooth, don't look smooth because whoever painted these first may have used this. Now, if you've got nice smooth walls, you need to use a roller for a smooth surface. And I have a previously used, actually two previously used paint liner pans. And rather than going to buy another one, I am going to use a plastic shopping bag to line this with. So that way too, when I'm just doing, I can just wad, it, wad up this bag, throw it away. Now, I learned by trial and error, if it's got print on it, turn it on the side out. Because that deep sometimes will be through and be on your paint. So, I'm going to take my liners, put my bag in here. Now, let me this is not the best thing. It's not the neatest. The bag starts getting wadded up. It may have a hole in it and leak, but this saves a lot of money and it serves a purpose. Now, I do like to paint. And I don't always use all my paint. Now I've already stirred this with a stir stick. These little things are great. You can store your leftover paint. And it's not quite as messy when you go to pour your paint out. Okay. 
-hmm. just be sure when you go to close this, this is open because if not, you really do get a splatter. Same way when you pour it, pop it back. So, I'm going to get paint on my paint roller here. Roll it through. Let the roller soak up enough paint so I don't have to jump up and down. Okay, and just as a safety disclosure, this is not a safety video. And I don't recommend that you crawl around on your tub or on your vanity, but if you do and you get hurt, it's on you. And again, I am starting from the top and working my way down. to get behind it and then I painted it with just a brush. But if you take this lid off of your toilet, you would be surprised how much more room you have behind it to be able to get in paint. And surprise, surprise, I have seen a little fuzz in this. That's why you keep seeing me do that right there is because there'll be a little piece of fuzz or something. But either I miss when I'm wiping the wall off and I'm getting it out as I go. It's a lot easier to do it when it's wet than when it's dry.
replace the light fixture. Now just in case there's any spots that didn't get a good coverage on it, because this is a two coat paint, but honestly it usually covers in one except for a few little spots. So just in case, I'm not really even bothering to wash my roller out or throw it away. I'm just going to take this. And even if I had paint left in it, that's even better. I'm going to take my little bag, fold it over, kind of pat it around this so it's going to stay moist for a while, at least long enough for me to be able to tell if there's anything on the wall that I need to touch up with the roller. So, we'll let this dry. We'll come back and see if there's anything that we need to go over again. Put the light fixture covers back on and... Um, well, the next thing we'll be doing is checking our little spots where we filled in the spackle. But so far, two of the three look good. Now, we'll come back a bit and check on it. Okay, so we've got the walls painted. It looks like we got pretty good coverage. There's one or two little spots I'm going to roll over again with the with the paint roller. But this is the only spot that we putted that I was just not happy with, and I've Rub my hand over it a couple times and you can see the putty come off of it. This paint is not, it's dry to the touch only. It's not cured. It's not, you know, you don't want to hang anything on the wall for a couple of days after you've painted it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand back over it. And I went and got just a, a putty knife versus a uh, painter's tool, which is a little bit thinner, a little bit sharper. And I'm just going to rub this across it and make sure I got all the stuff that's above the wall. And all I'm going to do is just re putty it and as you can see it fills in what's not even. And I want to do it at a little bit of an angle, take out the excess. In all honesty where I'm probably going to have to sand it and putty it this time and possibly one more and then paint over it and we'll be good to go. So we finished up our painting. I hope everybody's enjoyed it or learned something. Painting's probably not the most difficult thing that we're going to do in this video, which nothing in this little bathroom remodel is difficult. It's just a matter of knowing how to do it. So we're going to change the light fixture out, which some people may find out a little challenging, but trust me, it's not. We're going to change the faucet out, and we're going to frame out the mirror, and that should pretty much do everything we're going to do in here. So I hope everybody's enjoyed it or learned something. Scott did tell me he learned something that he did not know that the curved part of a painter's tool was to get the excess paint out of a roller. So that's a big plus for me. And uh, I have to say I've enjoyed it and I hope you, you liked it. Check the little thumbs up button. If you didn't, give me a comment and tell me what you didn't like about it. And if you've got any questions, just put them in the comments. And then one more thing, got one little shout out to Logan. Logan, I don't think I got any blue paint in my hair this time. So anyway, if you liked it, like I said, give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because in the next couple of days we will be doing the light fixture, faucet, and framing out the mirror. And the framing out the mirror is going to be a first for me, but hey, we'll get through it. Appreciate everybody tuning in, bearing with me, and we'll see you next time.